I love men's preach tonight. You guys always have something good. Go with me to Luke chapter 2. Brother Jake sharing with us that eternity, if we compared it to water, it would be like a drop. A whole lifetime is just a drop, and there's not enough drops in the world. I mean, you just it's, it's futile to try to uh, get yourself out of hell or to justify living for now and losing eternity. It's, it's futile when you think about the amount of time you have to spend suffering. Brother James, I appreciate your analogy of the thief on the cross. I don't know if you guys caught that. You know, it said, was it Matthew 27? Yeah. To Jesus, save thyself, come down off the cross. And his illustration was, most people act as if Oh, I'm on the cross, I'm condemned, but hold on, I'm going to get down and I'm going to go down and fix up my life and do everything right so that I can earn my own salvation. I, I got it because I was good, I repented of my sin, changed my life, whatever. What a good illustration. Brother Ross, that's a very touching sermon on ending well. Having duties now so that when you get to the end, you know that you can rest in saying, I believe I've done what I was supposed to do. I want to give you a thought that I had this morning while Brother Jake was preaching in our Sunday school hour. As he was preaching the gospel and his motivation for preaching the gospel, his story was very touching, where at the age of 30, he says, he realized that was his hero, Jesus, at the age of 30, started his ministry. And, and if you caught it, Brother Jake made a little mention. He said, that's when he started preaching the gospel. And he corrected himself and said, well, I'm sure he was preaching it before that. But at least, you know, that's when he really started that big ministry, that three years of just giving it all, just doing it all, fulfilling his purpose. The title of my sermon, my Lord willing, short sermon here, I'll be brief, is Jesus, the Teenage Soul Winner. You're in Luke chapter 2. I want you to see this in verse number 40. Verse 40, and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Uh, first of all, I want to say, praise the Lord for the children in our church that you can see the wisdom of God working in their life. I want you to know here in verse number 40, uh, we're going to get to the point where we see Jesus is 12. We're not there yet. We haven't made it to that verse. It starts out by saying while he was a child, he was waxing strong in spirit, full of godly wisdom, God working in their life. The grace of God was upon him. Verse 41, now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. When they had fulfilled the days, they returned the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been of the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. Verse 45, stay with me. And when they found him not, they turned back to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass, after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. This is a 12-year-old boy with such biblical wisdom and the power of the Spirit of God on his life that he can understand the questions that the big old scholarly doctors and the priests were debating about. And not only was he hearing their questions and giving them answer, he was asking them questions that they probably couldn't hardly answer. Verse 47, it says, And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Jesus was 12 years old at this point, and I know what you're thinking. Come on, Brother Fannin, this is God. I mean, surely even at 12, he was just amazing to hold a conversation with. But I want to praise the Lord for some of the children and the young adults in our church, uh, around 12 even, that after sermons have come to me and had serious Bible questions and serious Bible understanding because they have the Spirit of God on their life, they have the Word of God in their heart, and and they have parents that are directing them to be a soul winner, to preach the gospel, to focus on the Word of God. Jesus was a soul winner as a teenager. He started out young. 
And then at 12, we get this one glimpse of Jesus' childhood. Oh no, he snuck off and went down to the... He's in the temple. He's at the church. Talking Bible doctrine. I know some days are long up here at the church. Some families come in and stay all day and hang out late. And it's a good old time, especially if you're homeschooled. It's good to play with your friends and stuff. And I tell you, we keep catching the kids playing church after church. They're singing songs unto the Lord. Uh, they're, 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 well, we need a guy. Go get one of the, uh, the men. Go get one of the boys so he can be our preacher. The girls are in there playing church. <laughs> Isn't it neat when you can find children playing church? I'm very thankful for the future that God is setting forth for us here. We look at Jesus, and I remind you from my sermon this morning of the fullness of the stature of Christ, that we need to grow up into the measure of Christ, that we need to grow up like him. And just as I brought young Valor up, and one day he's going to be as tall as his daddy, if not taller, I hope that Valor's a spiritual giant one day, and he, he climbs spiritual mountains that his daddy couldn't even think about climbing. I mean, isn't that the goal? Isn't that why we do this? Isn't that what this is about? We don't just show up here to check a box and say, well, well, I'm not a Democrat. I go to church. You know what I mean? I mean, well, we're, we're, we are people of the book and people of the word, and we're people of the congregation and the fellowship. I want to show you this because, of course, they find him. They ask him what he's doing. You know, we're after you look at verse 49. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business. And there's the thought. How, how do we know Jesus was a teenage soul winner? He was about his father's business. You understand that uh, what goes on in a church, it is business, and it needs to be treated like business. And I'm not talking about the false prophets of the world that are after a nickel. It's not about the money. But we need to take church very seriously, and we need to treat it like a business. And if you told me tomorrow, hey, I'm starting my own business, and I'm going to offer this service, and I'm going to do these things or whatever it is, you would take Take it very seriously. You would be very passionate about it. You would try to be very thorough. You would worry about your reputation and your name. You would be marketing it. And you would want everybody to know that you're in business. Well, here Jesus is talking about the word in the temple, even as a young man. And I just want to encourage you parents, keep pointing your children in that direction. Now listen, there are some young men in here that are not quite 12 and probably young ladies as well. And we have young adults, teenage and older, that are interested in soul winning and are learning the verses to go out and preach the gospel. And I want to encourage you in this. I, I was... Uh, the first soul I saw saved, I was 11 years old. I don't say this to boast. I say it to encourage you and to provoke you unto good works. Don't doubt yourself. This is where the power is at. You understand that's what J Brother James is saying. Hey, I can go out and tell you my good old testimony. I can tell you how great of a church we have. And I can tell you this is where the power is at. You children want to see God work in somebody's life. You get this in your heart, in your head. You get it in your hand. You open it up. You let it come out of your mouth. You let it go into somebody else's ears. And you watch the power of the Word of God, how people respond when they hear the Word of God. This is where the power is at. And that's the business that Jesus was all about. Look at verse 52. It says, well, look at verse 51. It's important. He being God, and he went down with them, came to Nazareth, and was subject unto them. Children, I have to remind you, obey your parents. That's, uh, uh, God did it. Jesus obeyed his parents. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart, verse 52, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Those are the four areas of life to increase in wisdom uh, and stature and favor with God and favor. With, so your wisdom, there's your knowledge, your stature, there's your, your physical favor with God. That's your spiritual standing and favor with man. That's your social standing. Jesus actually increased in all of these areas. He worked on making friends. He worked on pleasing God. He worked on staying healthy and he worked on learning what he could. If you will, join me, go to John chapter 5. 
Go to John chapter 5. I want to give you this thought. Jesus, the teenage soul winner, he was about his father's business. And you say, well, what was he doing? How do we know what the business is? Well, he shows us as he comes on the scene and begins his ministry, it's to preach the gospel. John chapter 5, look at verse 17. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Here he is. He's out working. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he had not only broken the Sabbath, but, also, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Now, see, right away, I'm going to do the work that my father wants me to do. I, he works, and guess what? So am I. God is busy in all areas of life, revealing himself to mankind. Most people are trying to uh, not look at it and uh, you know, put a blind eye. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. There's no God. Jesus starts right away. I'm going to do that same work. And then he says, God was his father, making himself equal with God. He broke the Sabbath to prove that he was the Lord of the Sabbath, trying to show that these laws were made to give man a rest, not to show how holy you were. And then he right away, he's saying that he's equal with God, saying that he was God. By saying that he's the Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah, that made him God. And that's the work. Look at verse 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. And what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. He says, look out, there's bigger works coming, right? Verse 21. For as the Father raiseth up the dead... And quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. What a statement. Jesus had the power to forgive sins, and he had the power to raise the dead. Those are things only God can do. Verse 22, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Understand this. When Jesus is saying this before them, he's saying, God in heaven isn't going to judge you. I'm your judge as he stood before the Pharisees. Verse 23, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Jesus is speaking this to a crowd that's trying to separate the Son from the Father, the works of the Son from the works of the Father. I mean, think about it. He's literally saying, no, no, if you won't hear my word and believe, then you're not going to have eternal life. What a statement. If you would, go to John chapter 14. Go to John chapter 14. I'll be brief. We're going to finish here. There's more places I wanted to show you about some of the Lord's work that he did as he is a worker. He's up to his father's business. John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I prepare a place for you, I will come again. You know, it's interesting. The book of John doesn't have the Olivet Discourse. It doesn't have the Matthew 24, Luke 21, uh, Mark 13 that show Jesus telling what it's going to look like when he comes again. But right here, he says multiple times in this chapter that he will come again. He starts out by saying, in my father's house... There's mansions for you in his house. He says, in the, in the second half of verse 3, he says, And receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and know the way. The way ye know, rather. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? This question just really compels me. How can we know the way? There are plenty of people out there that would literally say, how can we know the way to heaven? But we need to train up the next generation to be about our Father's business. Amen. To do the work. Amen. What's his business? Well, he's in the business of saving souls. Well, what would he have you to do? To tell them to trust him that he's already paid for your sin. 
Do the work. Be about his business. Finally, Jesus answered in verse number 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Man, that's such good news that Jesus made it easy. He did all the hard work. All we have to do is trust him. It's not about our works for salvation. We rest in him. We can settle it by trusting in Jesus. Finally, look at verse number 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Jesus ends it with this. Here's the thought, guys. The work that you need to do is God's work. God's business is to save souls. He's going to do the work. He's given you the word. All you have to do is put forth the word, and that is your work. When you do that, it's God that's going to do the work in their heart. We have discounted and forgotten about the power of the word of God, and there are people literally standing out there saying, how can I know the way? There are so many different religions, and there are so many different Bibles, and I don't know what the way is and they need somebody to stand up with some boldness and say there is one way it's Jesus Christ the work of the father was to send the son the son came and did these miracles proving it and then he did that final work he died for all of your sins and he's risen again and now he says greater works than these shall you do Jesus only had three and a half years to really have a big ministry. And it made such an impact on the whole world that everybody knows his name and everybody has an opinion. Well, you that are young, listen to me. You have a lifetime. Starting now, will you get the word in your heart and do the work and watch God change lives when you open this up and you give it to those that are standing there saying, how can I know the way? I'll tell you how when you tell them. Jesus, I believe, was a teenage soul winner, kind of like some of the ones we have in our church. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for what you're doing here. Lord, I do ask that you would help us all to continue to spiritually grow and to take this challenge to get closer to you through the word. Lord, through seeking your will by prayer. Lord, if we need to, I ask you would help us to be strong enough to fast, to find your will for our life. Lord, I ask that you would bless these children, give them the strength to grow spiritually in your word. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.